Good evening, guys. Good evening, good evening. Um, I was about to sit down and do a couple of things, um, looking at a couple of projects I've been playing with, and I thought about some of the questions that I've heard and seen in the group. And the title of this video, y'all, is one I ask myself quite a bit. So, um, I have a cup that is a perfect example of a cup that is not cute. It is, it is not out there, y'all. It is, it is not. I am doing good. I put my epoxy shirt back on. I'm trying to go through fewer items of clothing that have epoxy stuck to them. So, if you're one of those that you have a different outfit on every time you work on cups, you're going to go through outfits pretty quickly, y'all. It is, it's bad. But I'm in Texas. We actually hit, I think, like 30, maybe 32, 34 degrees today. So it's exciting. We're back down to like 25, 24 ish right now. So everything's refreezing. But I will take the slush over the snow. All of my northern friends, you guys can have it. We have seen enough for the next 10 years. We're great. That's why I'm a southern girl. I like my seasons. So, um, what I'm working on tonight, let me show you guys the reason for the comment in the video. And I know you're going to ask yourself this question. Should I strip it? It is ugly. It is not what I see in my head. Should I strip it? You are going to ask yourself that question. I'm going to tell you now. You're going to ask yourself the question a lot. I have watched a few cup makers, guys. And I'll be honest, um, if you haven't watched on YouTube, Mr. Nola's Glitter, I love her tutorials. You can kind of just let them play in the background as she's talking. And when she gets to a really good part, it'll make you look up from what you're doing and just reverse and like, that's one. So there are a couple of YouTubers that are amazing. And some of them do short clips. They're like 10, 12 minutes. Some of them are like 30, 40 minutes. Some people give you the full blown hour and a half. I watch based on how much time I have. So if I'm at work and it's lunch, I have a short lunch. I don't know about everybody else. I get 30 minutes from a lunch, which is really like 22 minutes by the time you do everything else before you actually sit down with your food. But I had take that 22 minutes and I split it up and get the business done. So here we are. This is what I'm working on tonight. Do y'all see this? Does everybody see the number of craters, bumps? Oh, this is my favorite, y'all. This is like by far. This is actually a really, really beautiful, deep um, color. I actually love this color. I think the color is beautiful. This is Nebula from Maker's Flow. It is a chunky holographic glitter. But what I am horrible at, do y'all see that? This is what chunky glitter is gonna look like when you do one layer of epoxy. This is when most people who leave a message, ask a question, freak out, and they're like, oh my God, what is this? Um, should I sand it? And the answer, I'm gonna tell you in my humble opinion, I am new to this, so veterans, please let me know. And I've done it, y'all. I love holographic glitter. The answer is no. Please put two nice thick coats of epoxy on this. Chunky glitter is not your friend. So if you are one who hates to ruin or feel like you're wasting epoxy, stay away from chunky glitter. Chunky glitter, y'all, sucks up epoxy. But I will tell you, and I have some really good examples this is what that chunky glitter is like going to turn into. Excuse the pictures. This is before I learned to frame pictures and do all that greatness. But you see the smoothness? Look at the very top. Nothing. You can do that. All right. So um, remember I was telling you I'm going to do the next tutorial. I think I'm just going to do a walkthrough as I'm doing a storyboard. Um, a coloring sheet tumbler is what I call them. Because you literally take a coloring sheet and you color each and every part with glitter. Dying to do this, already have the design weeded out. So that is one I will actually probably not do as a live. I'm not sure. But um, it's on a chunky glitter base as well. And it's actually on a chunky glitter base that has turned out pretty smooth. And I'm really proud of that. So this is the base for the next tutorial that I'm going to do. This is Champagne from Maker's Well. Now, Maker's Flow is given life. And I will be honest, when you go to their website, it looks a little sparse right now. So I'm assume maybe COVID, weather, whatever, has them all calm. But if you look at just the colors that are pinging off of that. And so this is the cup that's going to be for episode, 
probably six or seven, because I'm thinking I'm almost ready. I'm trying to build up my confidence, because this is a first. And let me give you a little preview of the design, because I don't mind sharing. I saw a lady on YouTube who does quite a few of these. And this is gonna be my Tiana and the Frog design that's gonna go on that champagne cup. And so this is cut out with Cricut. It's only the outline of your coloring book pages. And then we're gonna sit and we're going to use acrylic paint to color everybody in as close to the glitter as possible. And then I'm gonna glitter each little section. So we'll see how that one goes. This will probably be like a two-parter. So I'll start it with you guys, finish it up, and then let you know um, the final process. So. If I haven't said so, thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching. And, hmm, chunky glitter. All right, so I actually have this monstrosity, this nebula, y'all, is going to be beautiful. And remember, these are the cups that I'm working on that are all turning into wood grain cups. So that's what this nebula is gonna turn into. I just had one guy in the department and I figured a good, rich blue would make it really, really pretty and stand out. So I'm gonna do a second round of epoxy. Let me bring you guys down so you can see how I'm working and what we got going on. And I'm trying to think, is this one of those moments where maybe I'll leave myself in the view, I guess, a little bit? So, all right, that makes my head look weird though. All right, here we go. So um, as I get ready to prep a little epoxy, this is the other cup turner. The one thing I've had to do is be really mindful of which sponges I'm using to hold things in general. So that's another thing I've really had to work on and focus on so that I'm able to um, properly fit my cup. I do still use wooden sticks. I know a lot of people don't. Um, I've heard it causes seizing of their epoxy and a couple of other things. I have not experienced that but we're gonna give it a go. So silicone cup. Yes, I wear my lovely PPE. I have my window up, my door is open, my fan is going, my ventilation is gonna be below me and I'm looking all around, here we go. So here is the mask that I wear in between and hopefully you guys will be able to hear me. So. This is my little baby that I wear. This is what it's gonna look like. So just kind of bear with me. I just wanna protect the little longs that I have left. But I'm gonna be working on actually um, three cups. So we're going to put a good second blood coat on this one. We're going to epoxy a newer cup. And then I'm gonna add a trim and do a little trim area of a cup as well. So. You've ever wondered, this is what this is. Whenever I don't have um, the door open um, and the vents aren't going, let's say I'm working on like candles and something else, um, then that will be the first thing I go to. So pulling over the good old epoxy. Good thing is I don't measure out um, epoxy nearly as often as I used to. I use the snow cone pops. Um, I believe that these are one milliliter pumps. When I first started cups um, a couple of weeks ago, I was using the little medicine cups, which I do have those. I have about probably 400 of those. And remember, there is ventilation all around me, y'all. Make sure you have your PPE. Make sure you're wearing your mask. You're doing your thing. You know, I'm trembling trying to get this resin out. But this is gonna put me just below 60 ml. And I go back in and always add a little extra squirt of hardener. I figured out for me that just kind of works. And so I stick with it. I already had a piece of parchment paper there. And so let's us make this happen. I'm gonna go ahead and start stirring. Nothing too special. So let me tell you a little bit about um, the chunky glitter in general. Um, I actually fell into doing cups or tumblers based on working with epoxy, making rolling trays. So originally I did rolling trays, ashtrays, I do TV tables and all kind of stuff. And what I was trying to figure out are different ways to use the same products that I have. I want to figure out as many different products as I can make 
with those same materials. It allows you to diversify. And for all of my ladies who are thinking about doing this as a business, a side hustle, full-time switch over, that becomes important because materials are huge. Um, the more you're into this side of the craft, and I'll be honest, compared to rolling trays and everything else, number one, my clientele is a bit different. I dealt with more guys on the rolling tray side than ladies, of course. Um, but most of my girls were the ones who did the ordering. So they would start the order and their guy would get all into it and help finish it up. Um, the quality of glitter becomes really important because you're dealing with lighter colors, pastels and whites. The type of epoxy that you use also becomes really, really important. And so I tell people things change based on circumstances quite a bit. And so you just have to be really aware of that, um, stay very, very mindful, and you should be fine. I'm using my silicone cup. I prefer these when I know I'm going to epoxy and do a nice little coat on at least two to three cups. Usually three um, is the number I'm up to. When I was doing one cup at a time, those little small medicine cups that you see everyone use, guys, you can get about 400 and something of these from... I think I got a 400 from Amazon for like four bucks, five bucks. But these little cups are awesome because they're already marked for you in milliliters. Um, you can pretty easily, if you use a marker, if it's hard, once you start pouring in your epoxy to figure out exactly how much you put in, use a marker to mark your lines. Um, there's another method where you actually pour part A into one cup, part B into the second cup, you mix those. I normally pour my thicker into my thinner. Does it make a difference? For most people, the answer is no. If you want to be sure to avoid running the risk of getting a tacky layer, so far I think I am maybe 15 to 18, 20-ish cups in, and I've only had two, mm, Two cups, I think. One or two cups that were actually um, tacky. And I do not like tacky cups, y'all. Tacky cups make me sad. And so after that, I switched to snow cone pumps because I wanted something that would keep it successful. And it's probably about time for me to go ahead and start um, reordering resin because you don't want to get low. I've done that before where I've completely run out. So usually I get down to like a third of a bottle, especially with the type of year we've been having, and I'm going to let that do its thing. Now, um, so I wanted to find a bunch of different ways to be able to use epoxy. And so I thought about, I did trays for a little bit, was pretty successful with it. I did a lot better with TV tables. So I figured larger items were kind of the thing for me. I was playing around and one of my friends was like, oh my gosh, have you seen what these girls are doing with these tumblers? And I'm like, what is a tumbler? No idea. So I get on, I join my first Facebook group and mine is blown. I mean, you know how you're strolling through and you see a tumbler that even you have to go back to? Like, oh my, how did you do that? It was one of those moments. So August of last year, probably July, August, we're in the middle of pandemicness. I became the queen of RTS ready to ship Sundays and man, I ordered cups for everybody in my family. So I was one of those. Last year's gift to everybody was a tumbler. And I believe I probably purchased about 15 tumblers, y'all. It's a lot of tumblers. So over three to four months, I was like a super customer. And finally, one of the people I had ordered from, I think I ordered maybe four five times. Like she was my go-to. And she said, look, I know you do art. I've seen your candles. She had ordered from me before. And she's like, I love your work. I really think you should think about getting into it. And I'm like, um, no, like turners. And she's like, but you have everything. You have glitter, you have epoxy, you have the tape, you have all the materials. The only thing I didn't have was a turner. And I'm thinking in my mind, like, oh, it's one more piece of equipment. I'm about to move. Oh, I just, you know, because for the longest, I just wanted a she shed to do my candles, y'all. And that was it. And she's like, no, you put more in a she shed than just candles. So I gave it a try. And, you know, we're making progress. So we'll see. 
working on my first set of orders or taking my first order now. So my goal was to do at least 10 cups, get as much feedback as I could, share as I went, and you guys have given me some amazing tips. Thank you. I really, really appreciate that because a lot of times a sister is lost. So I have some jagged edges if you're able to, and I get you a little closer. Come on down. Let's take a look. Y'all see that? That's a hot mess, y'all. That is a hot bona fide mess. You're going to notice that there are some craters. There are a couple of, you know, different places. This baby has been spinning actually since, oh gosh, when did I cover you? Maybe early, early, early this morning. So we've been doing about 14 hours of in between. So it's time for a second foot coat. And I'm going to go in with a really generous coat of epoxy. Like, really, really generous coat of epoxy. Because what I'm trying to do and what we're going to do with this coat is we're going to cover as many of these little craters, these developing fish eyes, as we can. And even as I'm putting on this overly saturated coat, and it's a lot, I know, I know, it's gonna be a little too much in some areas, but we go get it, y'all. We go get it. Don't forget the bottom of your cup. Because on Chunkies, the other place I hear that people are having a lot of problems is around the rim. They're always saying, how do you get your rims smooth? And what they're trying to do, or what I'm thinking um, from the people that I've talked to so far, what we've been able to figure out was they were trying to get it smooth with just epoxy by itself and that's not going to happen for some reason this epoxy sometimes really reminds me when i'm working on certain glitters it reminds me of chocolate m ms i don't know why y'all because off the funniest i don't know but they were trying to use the epoxy itself to ensure that their cut was smooth and what you end up with is a 80 pound um cup so I'm like, no, when they say flood, you're not flooding it to cover every single known imperfection to man. You're flooding it because chunky glitter and usually your holographic mixes are going to have anywhere from five to seven different size flakes in that container. And that's just from looking at a few different brands. Honestly, y'all, I pull stuff apart because I want to know. I want to know what makes it work, what makes it not work. And so what's happening is in between those little flicks, you're going to get those areas that are just lower. They're naturally lower than the chunky glitter that's going to stick up. And so you get all of this wayward glitter. And so you're pouring these humongously thick layers of epoxy, not thinking to yourself that after we do these first two layers, we're going to actually sand. And I'm going to sand this baby until it's smooth. The purpose of those first two layers of epoxy, keep in mind at all times, is to seal the glitter and keep your sanding block or sandpaper from getting to the actual glitter itself. You don't want it to reach your glitter. It is, I don't care how lovely your glitter is, how expensive your glitter is. You know, I've heard some, you know, my glitter is designed to, sandpaper and glitter are not best friends, y'all. Now, am I going to sand this cup? Absolutely. But if you notice, we have used, let me see if I can get a number for you. That is about 20 to 22 milliliters on this 30 ounce cup. And if I'm looking, top to bottom. Am I going to have some areas that poke out? Absolutely. But should I get nearly as many at this layer as I did the first layer? The answer is actually no. You shouldn't. So you should be able to see an obvious smoothness. Now I can see about five to ten places where I have individual flecks of glitter that are sitting up. And we're going to take care of those in the sand. So I like to get in a late night pour like this one because this cup is going to run and rotate all night. So it's roughly about 1030 or so where I am now. By the time I get up, run my errands and come back, this baby will have had 12 to 14 hours to sit in between projects. 
So it's going to be ready for a good sand and then another coat because remember, we're going to decal these. Do not apply a decal until you've gotten a smooth coat. So I've shown you guys kind of what that looks like. It does not get better. So make sure you have a nice and even coat before you make that particular mold. All right. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of space. And so I have the privilege of moving my cups around while they're on the turn. So that's what I'm doing now. Um, I am still using the Wagner heat gun from Home Depot. Um, I like the heat gun. I know some people use the torch, the carbon dioxide from your torch to help the flame. It's going to take out those micro bubbles that you hear people talk about um, really often. And remember, depending on your technique, your design doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to get your layers to the point where you're able to do exactly what you want to do. As you're moving your torch, be sure it's moving. You want to be able to see those bubbles, which you can usually see the micro bubbles come to the surface and they will pop for you. But you don't want to use it long enough that the epoxy heats up too much and it actually starts to drip down. We don't want that at all. All right, so I now have enough epoxy that I am going to take care of my next little baby. This is a 20 ounce, and I have to go back and update my description. So this is a 20 ounce skinny from Stainless Steel Depot. Love Stainless Steel Depot. Um, I've gotten some really awesome products from them. Um, the biggest thing with Stainless Steel Depot is make sure you plan ahead for shipping time. So they normally process your order pretty quickly, but I know sometimes you're placing the order thinking, oh, it'll be here, you know, in three to five days, three to seven days. Mm, it's not always true. You will get it within, I don't think I've ever waited more than five to 10 days, but I try to push out my orders knowing that I'm going to wait for a while. And in case you're wondering, because I've heard people talk about the bottoms, I do take my um, tumbler off the turner and when it's freshly epoxied, I stick it into the leftover glitter before I return it to the container. And this is what that bottom is initially gonna look like. So if you're looking from the side, I don't think you can see it because it's chunky glitter. There are going to be multiple, multiple layers. So it's not going to be smooth, but it's going to be nicely compacted. It reminds you of like the drill team uniforms when they're sequined. Those are the kind of layers you're going to see toward the bottom of this particular cup. Now, make sure you pay attention to the direction of the spin. I know I like mine to spin away from me. So I'm going to wait a second. Allow this one to have a little moment and it should turn the opposite direction. Um, remember the pat down method. This is one that I think I lightly patted it, but I didn't have time to come back and wrap it. And if you wrap it, you can avoid those random glitters that are sticking up. So we're gonna use somewhere between probably about 15 milliliters on this cup. It's a much smaller cup, but you want to flood your illustrious, um, glitter layers because that's going to be a lot. There's a lot going on. And you don't want to have it where it's just everywhere across. It's just running everywhere. So I don't want it that light. But I do want to make sure with glitter, with chunky glitter especially, you're going to go to extra mile and go ahead and put a nice coated layer on your tumbler. If you coat it now, it's going to make everything else a lot smoother. And this is going to actually be um, a honeybee tumbler. So quite a few deca decals are going to go onto this one. I know it's going to have to take a paint job on top. So I really want to make sure that everything that needs to be smooth is going to be smooth. And the only way I can achieve that as far as chunky glitter is making sure that I've applied enough layer-wise to get that done. Now, holographic glitter, of course, is gonna give off um, several different colors. You have to be really mindful when you're working with a client, and this is something I've 
figured out. I made door reefs previously. And even in my day-to-day -day profession, guys, as a teacher, I've had to learn that fully explaining a product, what it's going to look like to a customer, can be a difficult thing. So even if it comes to just picking glitter colors, you want your client to fully understand what you're pointing to. So having some kind of visual gives them an idea. If I'm working on a custom order, I'm going to keep that client informed through the entire process. And before I epoxy, I'm going to be sure that I get their approval because it's clearly stated um, business-wise that once epoxy is applied to a product, it can no longer be changed and any mistakes become the responsibility of the customer. So if you have a misspelled name, if there's something that you didn't include that you probably should have, then that's going to be reflected. So as you're making your policies, you want to be mindful of that as well. I'm going to take just a little epoxy because I know that I need to hit the bottom of this cup with a vengeance, y'all. The bottom of this cup is something serious. Now, there are some chunky glitters that I have run into that are really, really beautiful, but I'm not sure that I would use them per se for a tumbler because the shapes that are included are very, um, they're very distinct, but it also allows for a lot of usage of epoxy. So I'm not sure it's the most cost effective method. And what I'm looking for right now is any spot that wouldn't be shiny, any spot that hasn't been covered, because this is one of those cups, I wanna make sure I get as full of coverage the first time as possible. This first coat, which I call the ugly coat when it comes to chunky glitter, is actually one of the most important coats you're going to put on your cup. And you wanna be careful. Um, and I was about to so put that in my cup, but I still have one more cup to go that does not include this colored glitter. So I don't wanna contaminate the glitter for no reason. So let me just free my hand on that one. The longer this goes, that flood coat goes on really nice and even. Remember that epoxy is self-leveling. So if you just give it a second, and if your turner is straight, then you should be able to get everything on there. Should you strip it? No, no, no. Um, I listened to one YouTuber, and she stated she's been making cups for about six years. She's never stripped a cup. She will take whatever ugly cup she has created and she turns them into something. She will marvel them. She will peekaboo them. She has created probably a couple of techniques along the way, but she firmly discourages people from stripping cups. I know I have two that are already um, rolled in a paper towel that was soaked in acetone, wrapped around the cup, and then you wrap it like a burrito, tie the ends in aluminum foil. So I have two of those that are already outside in the garage. And honestly, y'all, I got two more that I'm going to just strip down because the cups are really nice, but I can definitely use them for something else. So this one is done. This is another one that will spin until the morning. And it's kind of nice. I started with just two turners. I knew right away that one was not going to be <laughs> what I wanted. So I at least accomplished that. And I think we got one stray nebula glitter that does not belong over there. All right, so here we go. I have another project. This was, I'm going to wipe this on myself. I know I am. This is my first Hydro Sports bottle that I did. I actually did it for my baby. She wanted her name and all that greatness, y'all. And I have, I forgot to do the very top of this rim. So everywhere there's this little edge, I did not, unfortunately, originally cover it with epoxy. And so what happens, I clean the cup up finally because she's been whining about her cup. I want my cup, you, you know, if you got a girl, y'all know how it goes. If you got a boy, you know how it goes. I have three middle schoolers. And so she's been whining about this cup and I just could not. And I looked at it and I said, I know you want your cup. I know you're looking at it and it's just sitting there. But number one, I had to contemplate, how was I even going to get the glitter in this itty bitty space? Which was the first question I had to figure out. 
And then once I did that, I had to go back because I created these lovely drips on her cup that I did not want. And so here I am left with drips on a cup that should not have had any drips on it. Um, I don't even know if she's noticed. I doubt it. Um, I only have one child that probably notices small, small details. But I noticed, and they are bothering me, y'all. They're bothering the crap out of me. So I ended up taking a little epoxy. I applied um, glitter. But I forgot, for some oddball reason, that this glitter was actually going to... Are you dry enough? You are. I'm going to need this tumble off. But this glitter was actually going to need to sit. And so it rolled down the cup and it made these illustrious drips. And now she has drips at the top of her cup. And I was wondering, should I go back and reseal it or what? I just know she wants the cup. Um, I've been done with this little flash off for quite a while. So all you see me doing now is going in and trying my best to just seal the little area that is around this cup. I'm really hoping that it stays. I'm tempted to go down these drips. I'm tempted to go down these drips, but I don't want to mess up the cup. And I don't want, because some of these drips are like really, really long. So I'm thinking I'm probably gonna go in, and I could do this now that it's covered. Let's see if I can free up a turner. And I don't wanna mess up this cup because this is my big bed. And this little baby is doing great. So this one can sit. This is gonna be my Tiana. And this Tiana cup is awesomeness. So. Give me a second, let me just put this over to the side. I had to put my cups on the edge. I'm always extremely fearful they're gonna get bumped or tossed or something. And this is one of those projects you didn't expect to do, but you're gonna have to do because baby asked you to. So let me turn this glove, which that one's gonna go by the wayside anyway. Just here. I end up with powder from gloves on probably every outfit that I own. And the biggest thing with this one was getting the hydro to fit, y'all. This was, oh, it's like the worst. And I could not figure this out to save my life. So it took me a while to figure out that's how you get this thing to sit. And what I'm gonna do, now that I have this one where I want it, I'm gonna actually just go ahead and really want you to sit. I'm gonna go ahead and re-epoxy at the very top. Now, with these longer ones, the longer jars, what you're gonna notice is quite a few of these, and this one has epoxy on the inside, are gonna make you feel as though your cup is leaning. It's not always leaning. So it just kind of depends on how you look at it. Um, some people ask how many gloves you go through, tons. I usually buy my gloves in packs of 200, to be honest. And what I'm gonna do, instead of killing, I ended up getting these really thick white latex ones, and I'm really tempted to try to soak these and use them more than once. But I just haven't so far. Y'all know I got those little cheap plastic gloves too, because I'm only doing just the very top portion, so I don't wanna kill a fresh pair of gloves just for this. So, um, have I had to go back and do revisions on cups? The answer is yes. And this one is turning the infamous wrong direction. Do I like to do revisions on cup? The answer is no. So it's one of the reasons when it comes to customers and clients, um, I've learned just from the candle business in general to ask twice, not just once. Make sure your client understands what you're asking them. Because sometimes they're like, yeah, that'll be fine. You know, do whatever you like. I'm not as big of a fan as my do whatever you like um, clients. I have some clients that I know I can 
do whatever I like. And I have others that I have learned that's not what they mean. Um, they really mean something totally different from that. So um, just know your, your clients, know your group, um, know what's expected, and you should be fine. And I'm actually just going to end up doing a light coat on this entire one. I've never been really good at just doing a coat in a certain area. Some people can come in and justify epoxy at that one spot. That is not going to work for me. This was a 25 ounce Hydro Sport from Steel Magnolia. No, take that back. This is a hog brand. So it's Stainless Steel Depot. Um, I ordered some, I think 20 ounce skinnies from Steel Magnolia. And they were cute. I've been looking for the non-taper cups. You will hear people say, for example, um, a 20 or 30 ounce skinny. I get a lot of people to ask like, which one sells, you know, do you sell the most? And that was usually my question because I didn't have the space for a million cups. Um, honestly, the cup that I sell or carry the most of currently, it's probably my 20 ounce. Uh, 20 ounce skinny, you're going to have quite a few of those. So if you have not jumped on the skinny bandwagon, go ahead and jump, make that leap. Um, you're gonna have to. People love their 20 ounces. It's just big enough for the average person. Now I'm noticing right now that I'm not getting a lot of work play out of this epoxy. See how you got it going. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm actually going to grab my heat gun. I'm gonna heat this up a little bit. It may have just been, the epoxy's been sitting for a hot second. And this poor little hydro sport has been through, y'all. It has been through the ringer. But right now, I want this epoxy to spread. And I can definitely feel the difference when I do that. So we're gonna add just a little heat to it. And you can see how my glove is able to slide. So if you ever run into a cup, you don't want to overdo it on the cup, especially a cup that has pictures or decals or anything like that, because I want those space in there. I wasn't happy after the fact. I should have framed the pictures. Um, didn't learn you know, anything about framing until recently. And that's just coat has pretty much disappeared. So I would put a white background using vinyl behind each picture and then gone back um, and put like the little snaps on the end. And then that would have allowed her pictures to stand out a little bit more. I could have avoided the glitter on the final coat as well. So that was another thing that would have made these particular pictures pop better. They were not the highest quality pictures. So that's the other thing. So I want to try it with her. I'm going to try it again with her because she's my Snapchat, TikTok, Instagram queen over here. And it'll allow me to practice with pictures before you do a memorial cup or anything else similar to that um, for actual client. Um, currently, I do not offer any styles to clients that I have not done before for a family member, for myself or something. I tell all my family um, up front. Hey, I'm sending you this cup. I want you to try it out. I need you to carry it with you. You know, I give them the same instructions I will give my customers. And, you know, don't leave it in the car. Don't, um, you know, use it in the dish. Don't place it in the dishwasher. You know, all your regular instructions. Because I want to see what it's like when they're using it. Like, um, as far as wear and tear, they're going to drop it. They're going to do some stuff to it. So it helps you just kind of figure out what to do with your product. I want you guys to really get in a creative mind. So um, just to give you an idea, there are a couple things coming up. The storyboard tumbler, the coloring sheet tumbler is one that was asked for. Um, the shipwreck is another one that I got a message about today to see um, can we do the shipwreck technique. I'm gonna actually show you how I do the wood grain. I've already done two for that order and I have two more. So what I'll do um, probably the next episode after I've already decal, spray painted, I will bring you back and we can actually wood grain that out together. 
And I'll do one as a fresh wood grain, which I may wait until this nebula blue is ready. Then the other one will already be wood grain and we can just sit, kind of weed that one out. And you guys can see what it looks like from there. Remember, if you ever get adhesive stuck on your peekaboo section, take a small swab, a Q-tip um, is perfect. Those little makeup um, applicators are another one. The ones for mascara are really good. Dip it in a little alcohol and you can go in and remove that adhesive just fine. If it's a clear adhesive, honestly, you won't be able to see it under epoxy anyway. Um, and it also reminds you what type of vinyl to use or not to use. Sometimes it just depends on the condition of the epoxy layer that's under there. Remember, don't decal anything that's sticky. Don't decal anything that's rough either. So those are going to be your biggest two. Last but not least, before we go, we have a little epoxy left. Those of you who have been keeping up with me, just kind of hanging out. We're up to almost a set of these. These are the ice trays from Ikea. I found these in actually three different shapes. And what I'm gonna do is whenever I have extra epoxy, so whenever I do three colors, I usually have just a little bit left over. But I add in my dunk glitter, which I haven't had very much of lately. Mm -hmm. Went in. And from my dunk glitter, I go ahead and just pour it into a mold. And that allows that left or epoxy to serve a purpose. And it also doesn't matter how many times you have to come back and do this because you're gonna pour it, it's gonna level itself and it's gonna turn out great. So I'm gonna turn these into like little card games. So this will be like a tic-tac-toe set and they're inexpensive. You can turn them into keychains. Honestly, they have enough shapes. You can just about turn into whatever you want it. And I'm about to be really lazy. I would take my heat gun to this, but I know the heat over time is gonna break down silicone, so I try to be really mindful. So I'm just gonna move this, because remember, this is self-leveling. And these are the two we had poured from earlier. So they just needed a little bit more volume. And I figured I would pour one more time. Um, if I am in the midst of orders, I try to go to bed with that tumbler, with my turners going. Um, it keeps me from waking up in the middle of the night. And thankfully, knock on wood, so far, I've only had one tumbler come off the turner and it did so pretty, pretty quickly. And it was actually the same turner that the nebula is on now. So that's one of those. If I don't have a large pool noodle on the end, um, I normally don't run it unless it's a really light cup, like maybe a 20 ounce skinny. You're gonna figure out some of your turners are better with cut certain cups than others. Um, for that reason, a lot of people will buy different cups um, and different turners and just make them specifically for that one. It's not a requirement, but it probably will make your life easier. So um, that's gonna take care of all 60 milliliters. So that did our Nebula cup. It flood coated our um, honeybee cup. We are ready to go on the coloring sheet cup. And I was also able to touch up my baby's cup and fill these other two in. We've only got one more set. And then I'll be able to do um, a little video just showing you different activities you can make for those. Some keychains, um, thank you gifts, anything like that would be awesome. Well, that is it for me tonight, guys. I'm going to go ahead and clean up a couple of things. If you think of any questions, let me know. Remember, before you strip it, put it to the side, let it sit a couple of days, come back to it. You either can marble it, you can peekaboo it. There's something we can figure out. If you have a cup you're thinking about stripping, do me a favor. Post it in the comments, and then as a group, we'll come in and shoot out some ideas and kind of see what you can do with your cup. I've got an ugly cup, y'all. I just got to find which one is the ugliest. So I will definitely post later as well. If you have comments, be sure to leave those in the if you have questions, be sure to leave those in the comments and I will answer all of your questions. Um, my videos are posted in Tumblr's for newbies. Um, you can also find them in a crafter's journey. So you will notice I always try to hashtag a crafter's journey, which um, is a group that I can just keep my videos streamlined and keep up with them from there as well. 
Um, if you see a good tutorial or if there's a technique that you hear up you want to try, let me know. I am Shandria, main creator for BCJ Decor, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Good night.